and then yes it was me singing but no it wasn't me playing on the recordings and we recorded it before and then I had to put a mind to the track basically that's how it goes I remember one time I went to set and there was a piano and it was going to play in the scene and it was in between takes and I walked on the set and Tom's there to me he's playing the keys and I'm like great he plays a piano <laughs> Talented in this view. It's all great. Thanks, man. Does that answer your three questions? Uh, and what was the, your favorite song? Oh, gosh. Uh, probably Wicked Game. Yes. Because I wanted to do that. Yes. 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 Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. But it's a really cool, that's a great question because it's a really cool process. Uh, you get to go into the studio, like a legitimate music studio, and record with a, you know, a real producer and a real artist, and lay down the tracks the way they do it professionally, you know, as if you were going to hear it on the radio. So that was a pretty cool process. Right? It was. I, and it was lovely that like, I felt like that I, I was the only person who got to do that for a long time. And then when we did the musical episode, everyone got to go in and record in the studio. It was so much fun. So much fun. Thank you. <laughs> she said, I hate Kevin. <laughs> Keep your friend
watching him kind of grow as a director on our set and then take it on to other places is such a kind of, it's such a lovely thing to watch because he, uh, we all know Kevin's an incredibly talented actor, but he is so, so brilliant as a director. Every actor loves working with him. So, um, I don't know what the project would be. Tropic Thunder 2. <laughs> yeah, I'm a dude dressed as a dude acting like another dude. <laughs> I'm the dude play the dude and play the other dude. <laughs> yeah, that's the thing, it's like, it doesn't even matter what the project is, because you know you're going to be in good hands. It could be a comedy, it could be the serial killer drama that <laughs> um, you You just, you know you're in good hands and you know you're going to have a shorthand, not only from working together as actors, but also working together with him as a director on Lucifer and also on the short that you did. That's what I worked with you first as a director, I think. And then a couple episodes on Lucifer. So yeah, it would just be one of those experiences where you go in knowing he's got that part covered and you can go to him for anything. So whatever whatever the style of show, you know you're in good hands. I, I didn't work with Kevin who's directing. I've seen a film that he directed, which was fantastic. I, I didn't even know he had done it when I watched it. Um, but I heard good things about you directing Lucifer, obviously, and you know, pe one of the things that I kind of carry around is you, you can't be in survival mode and creative mode at the same time. And a lot of times what you want out of a director is somebody who can take care of everything around you so you can focus and be creative in a safe environment to fail and to have your back. Because if you're worried, if you're scared to open yourself up, that's the, you can't be creative. And from what I understand, you, you created that for, for your cast, and I know even behind their back they say good things about you. <laughs> yeah, I think, you know, every, every, uh, every director talks about, like, um, what their superpower is. And I think my superpower as a director is my ability to be one of, one of us. I'm an actor, first and foremost. And that's my superpower, is my ability to communicate uh, and understand where, where, you're, where you're coming from. Because it's such a sensitive part of what we do. Everything's internal, right? Um, so I think that's my... My superpower. I think it's great. That was a great question because, guys, I have a film no one is talking about. <laughs> I'm a theater director too, and I came out of stage management. All right, on. Fantastic. Thank you for your question. Uh, next, over here. Hi, um, okay. my name is Abby, and um, my question is is um, for Tom. Um, how would you feel like at the end you saw Charlotte and Dan, and if they got married, how would you feel of Dan being your stepdad? <laughs> I'll tell you how Dan would feel. <laughs> oh God, I'd have to get over it, wouldn't I? Um, well, Dan's a great dad. He really is a great dad. Uh, so, I'd, you know, I'd have to kind of suck it up, but it'd be weird. It'd be really weird, not going to lie. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Hi, my name's Rebel. Uh, I have a question for Tom. Um, you know, I've yet to knock with Tom and Holly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I watched your friend's Rush, so I don't know if he's done in the Rush show. Um, but I wonder what was your favorite that you put in the show that they kept, and what would you wish they kept in that they did? Favorite? In, just improv. Oh, improv. In Rush? Uh, in, in Rush or Lucifer. Rush. In Rush. First of all, Tom's the freaking master of improv. <laughs> I mean, I, I can remember showing up on set on days uh, and, and uh, watching uh, the rehearsal and setting up, and every time the director or the, the first AD or whoever it is would be like, don't worry, just put in the scene, Tom's going to do something great. <laughs> he won't tell you what it is, that's going to be great. <laughs> I, can't, I couldn't tell half the time if he was saying his lines or not. <laughs> because it all, comes, it all comes so naturally. He could have been doing his actual line, I just, you get lost in it. And what I love about my character, my whole thing was not getting caught up in any of that bullshit. <laughs> that was when, so I, I just got to kind of watch and be like, yeah, anyway, uh, I got other things to do, so it was helpful. How was the kiss? Scratchy. <laughs> All the rehearsal. You're like, we need to rehearse this over and over. Like, Come on, man. You're a professional. It'd be quite a film for me now, wouldn't it? Like a joke for me as well. Let's get stuck. I will say that was, that was my favorite episode that I did, and it was a lot of fun to do that because he did a lot of improv, like, 
trying to hold my hand, where even when you couldn't see it, slapping me on the butt. It was, it was just stuff that really pissed Pierce off. And I will say that there was a big build up to that, to the kiss. And, uh, you know, we, we nailed it. First day. And, we're, uh, and I remember being like, good, we got it, right? We got it, we got it. And I was like, oh, I'd like another, please. And all the, all the other background performers just start dying laughing. It was really fun. Yeah, it was good. Um, gosh, I mean, I, 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 like, I was given a lot of license to, to mess around and to the type of character that we could do that. Um, gosh, off the top of my head, I can't really think, but I think that I just was very lucky to, to, to be like, allowed to do that, because I know a lot of sets, you're not allowed to do that, but um, I think also because the uh, showrunners were American and I'm not, uh, I was able to introduce quite a lot of British phrases that no one had ever heard before into it. And what I did enjoy doing in the first few seasons when we were on Fox was trying to get stuff in that I knew was rude. <laughs> and if they knew what it meant, it wouldn't be allowed in. But standards, American standards, American standards. Yeah, catch. exactly. They haven't got any idea what a wank is. Brilliant. <laughs> anyway, stuff like that. Thank you. Hello. Hi. Um, I'm Abby from Boston, and my question is for Tom Ellis. I know you come from a family of ministers. How did they feel about you playing the devil? Well, we don't talk anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, then, I mean, I do, I do come from a family of ministers. Um, and, I mean, they treated this as if it was any other job. I think some people uh, in the sensational world of media sometimes would like to make a big deal about that. But I, you know, I did grow up in the church, but I grew up in my, what I thought was quite a cool way of being in the church, where we talked about all the good aspects of Christianity, or any religion really, which is about tolerance and forgiveness and understanding and kindness and all of those things. Um, so, my, you know, my, my family were, they just were pretty supportive of it being a job. My mum and dad don't watch it, but not out of protest. It's just not their cup of tea. Won't. <laughs> Next. Hi, my name's Jennifer, and I did watch Miranda. Woo! I have to say, it snort laugh, which I don't normally do. <laughs> I got a distinct eye. Um, my question is about Neil Gaiman. Um, back to opera. Well, Neil Gaiman, okay. um, did you meet him? Like, he, should, he should voice like every audiobook. <laughs> I'm, I'm listening to his Sandman right now. Would you be open to another adaptation of his? If he does one? Of Neil's? Yeah. Always. Yeah. I think he's a genius. <laughs> he's also an incredibly lovely man. I, I uh, got to meet him at Comic Con. Uh, just after the show got saved, so it was a great time to meet him. He was he was super lovely, and um, yeah, as, you know, he came on and um, voiced God uh, in our alternate universe episode, isn't it? Um, but yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, Neil's like someone that everyone wants to work with. He's brilliant. He's a god. He is a god. <laughs> he is a god. He's got great hair. Hello. Good morning, everybody. Um, my name is Lisa, and first of all, I want to say that when each one of you moved on to your final place, I cried, and Dan died, and Charlotte moved on, and we both cried. Um, ultimately, what I want to say is that through Lucifer's character, in conjunction with everybody else's character, um, it's just proof that while God puts you in trials and tribulations, you end up getting to your rock bottom, and that's where you heal, and that's how you can help heal others. So I believe that that's what was down in hell. And he actually went back to a place originally that tormented him, and he was able to heal somebody. Uh, so my question is, I'm going to wait for that. Um, <laughs> uh, my question is, um, if you could clarify for me, why at the end, uh, when Lucifer finally goes to hell, why is he not able to come back up? Uh, to visit Chloe, Rory, just like Amelia Deal was able to visit Charlie and Linda. Well, this is a point of huge debate, isn't it? <laughs> yes. It is. Some people didn't like it. 
Um, we talked a lot about it. Uh, I, I felt personally that uh, for there to be a real payoff for our six seasons, that there had to be a big sacrifice. And I think that we tried to set it up where Lucifer didn't want to jeopardise anything that had just happened with Rory and with Chloe. And I think in full acknowledgement of the fact that I, I, I was really quite, quite keen to suggest that if Chloe brought Rory up on her own, that's not a bad thing. Like they had an amazing relationship. There's, there are single parents out in our world who do amazing things for their children. And that should be celebrated as opposed to this kind of perfection that we always try and get to on TV. And this kind of, you know, it's just a happy, happy, happy ending and there's no edge to it. And I felt that um, ultimately, you know, those three characters would all see each other in eternity. And they knew about eternity and they knew it was real, which is very different to what we know, what we know in the world. Um, and so they would eventually all see each other. And they had that as their comfort. But they had to see it through, you know, in a way that was, that was good for everybody, I felt. Some people were not satisfied with that ending. And I do apologise. Um, but I wasn't, I, if it had been the other way around, I wasn't satisfied with that. I thought it was a bit too convenient, to be honest. There you go. Thank you. No one's ever satisfied when a show ends no matter what happens, trust me. <laughs> Can't please them all. Hi. Um, I also think it's slightly dangerous to write for the viewers. I think you want the viewers to come along with you, but you can't listen to what people want and then write to that, because then it becomes a diluted version of what your story is. Hi, I am, I'm Cheryl from Canada, and you're all fabulous and lovely. And I'm just wondering, um, because you've had such a good chemistry with Lauren German, if any of you are going to be able to do another project with her sometime in the future, because she, it's quite obvious how great she is, and we would love to see you work with her again in some project. And anyone who's anyone doing anything with her soon? I would love to work with her forever. <laughs> <laughs> I, there's nothing planned, but yeah, if, if, if it was presented to me without even hesitating, I'd say yes. Yeah, I think I think the same. It's. Um, I don't know of anything that she's got going on right now, and, and uh, you know, I think it's, for all of us, it's a, it's a little bit of a, this business is kind of crazy, and your life can change in a minute, or some another opportunity dis disappears or comes along. So I don't know of anything with her. Uh, I think she's taking coming a little up. bit of a break, right? She, she, she is, taking yeah. A bit of a break and she's doing a lot of art. Yeah. yeah, she's a brilliant artist. Um, and uh, yeah, if the opportunity arose, absolutely. Tommy, would you love it? Well, <laughs> it depends on the project. Um, I was actually just talking to her yesterday, her uh, trying to get her her uh, her friend to play uh, Lisa. Um, but um, no, she's fantastic. She's so much fun. Instantly, when I, when I got the set, all these guys are so much fun. And I find that you know, I, I think when I was younger, I, I, I thought I was like picky about. Who I wanted to work with and whatnot, but I think I just really wanted to work. And as I've gotten older, I've kind of come around and I just want to work with people who I can enjoy and actually be around and, and be creative with. And more and stuff with those people. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, she's we. Are, she's and anyone will testify. She is quite possibly one of the funniest people certainly I've ever met. Vulgar. And vulgar. Like vulgar. Like you're on set. There's like cameras rolling. And she's like, I know. <laughs> I know, I'm surprised you get in more trouble actually. I, yeah. <laughs> oh, Especially I the time period there's going on, there was one I was like, I know. Oh, yeah. All right. She did a lot of the practical joke. There was one time that she got into, well, she, she kind of got into a good place. Yeah. She had to go in, it, she had to go into the producer's office oh, and get a talking to, but they were all laughing about giving her a talking to. <laughs> She wasn't taking the talking too seriously. It's like when your kid's done something that you think is really funny that you're meant to discipline her about it. And she um, she donned a pair of camel toe underwear that she bought on Amazon and decided to wear it in a rehearsal of your episode. On the outside of her outfit. On the outside of her outfit. 
she managed to hide it in a little coat until the camera started to hold it. <laughs> and, uh, and then, yeah, and then, you know, we had to go through the disciplinary process. <laughs> so you can't wear camel toe underwear to work. Yeah, it, 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 it appeared in the makeup trailer first, we were all crying laughing. And that's where we thought it was going to end. <laughs> There's one thing you know about Lauren, it never ends in the makeup trailer. Okay. <laughs> well, that's a nickname that'll stick. <laughs> hey! Yeah. Thank you. There you go. But we don't have to work with her again, for sure. We have time for one more question. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Uh, the question is with all the cast. What are you the most proud of about the show? And to Tom Walling, how do you feel about breaking the Superman curse? <laughs> well, the, the curse thing, I, what I convinced myself is I didn't really wear the suit, and that's the curse, because I think what happened in the old days is when you wear the suit, the people, that's all they can picture you in, partly, but I think look, there's so much stuff out there now, and that's not so much of a deal. Um, sorry, what was the first question? <laughs> <laughs> what are you the most proud of on the show? Oh, me? Um, I just had a great time doing it. I, I knew the show, I watched the show, and to be able to be a part of it. It shot on one rose lot, which was like 10 minutes from my house. It never happened ever again. Um, and it's such a warm and, and great cast. I, I just, the only thing I'm not happy about is when, when you got shot, there, there's a, the, the way the camera shows me, like the, the gun goes off and then you fall and then it goes back to me and it's just, it looks so awkward. I'm like, oh. <laughs> and partly it's because I thought there was going to be another shot. <laughs> you know, like I just didn't ask, but I figured, like, ah, oh, this is kind of why they're, they're not going to be here for the exit. And so I had, I guess, maybe I was being irresponsible and I hadn't thought about how my exit. I just figured I was going to, all right, I'm going to shoot, I'm going to see it, I'm going to go. Well, in the instant of me going, I forgot which direction. <laughs> like, just, duh, right? No matter what, go to the right. You know what I mean? Just tell yourself that so you don't have to do it. And so I shoot, and then this, I was like, oh, whoa, 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 what'd they say? And I just leave. And so I, I really am sad about that moment. And I'll tell you a quick story is when, when my character died, it was like the last thing we shot, it was one of the last things we all shot. My wife was there, her brother was there, they were watching, it was great. And I remember my wife's brother being like, dude, it sucks you're dying, huh? And I'm like, dude, I gotta bring you back. And he goes, are you upset they're killing you? I'm like, no, they're gonna bring me back. So I left. And then like, about six months went by, <laughs> and then the show was back on, and I'm like, hey, they didn't call, what? I died! And I'm, I'm dead! And then I got really sad. <laughs> so it took a while. It was simple. Oh, man. Well, as, as you know, when they shoot people on our show, they never come back. Oh! <laughs> oh <okay. laughs> it's all good. <laughs> I just I had a vision of you in the Superman suit with Lauren's camel toe under it. That I would have been Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you can get those at my team. <laughs> yep. Kevin, yeah, what's your prayer? What, what are you proud of? You know, I think I'm, what I'm, uh, there's so much that I'm, that I'm proud uh, about this show. Uh, first and foremost, I think I'm, I'm proud of the relationships between us that we created, that we were able to create, and the atmosphere that you, Tom, helped set the standard for, and all, you know, he set such a fun, professional, somewhat relaxed, um, safe area for all of us to come in and play. And so I'm very proud of that. It's something that I have taken to uh, uh, my, my next show that I'm on now, that I try to, I try to sort of follow in your footsteps. But the other thing that, uh, that I'm really most proud of is you guys and how much you have been able to attach yourselves to what we've done and appreciate the stories that we've told. So that's very good. Thank you. Okay. Um, I think uh, work-wise, being able to uh, you know go off of what Kevin said, the relationships, you guys, um, you guys accepting me, being part of it, even though I was only there two seasons. Um, but on that note of, of coming back and playing a different character, and I, I think, from what you guys say convincingly, um, going from mom to Charlotte and making them two different people and making you care about each one individually um, makes me feel good. Mm -hmm. 
Well, you do. Um, I think, I mean, just picking up from generally, I think to do a show about the devil and for the overwhelming kind of feeling and message that came out of it to be about kindness and acceptance, I think that's quite cool. And I'm just really proud. I don't think we set out to do that in the first instance, but what it became and how you guys became invested in it and how, you know, just the journey of the show on and off screen was not straightforward. But what it did along the way was just to bring a collective mindset of how people should be with each other. And, you know, to see people of like group of friend groups that have happened out of this. Like, the amount of people that come up and say, oh, well, meeting all these people, we've been talking to each other for the last six months, we've never met, this is the first time we meet. I just think it's wonderful. And like, we never set out to do that, but isn't it amazing what happens if you, if you go into something with the right intention? Anyway, there we go.